Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I have my co-host with me, Emily, in the house. Hey, everyone. Girl, it is so much tea going on right now on Twitter. I swear, Twitter has been lit all day. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't have Twitter, but I get on Instagram, so I see some of the mess. Right. And we've been talking about it on social media and the Telegraph. So one of the big things that's coming out today is that Cardi B was trending. Um, And one of the things that she is trending for is that basically she's going to be featured on the new um, Baby Shark show. But it's not just, you know, her culture. It's also Offset. It's going to be Cardi B, Offset, and Baby Culture. And she's going to be playing Sharky B. And so I'm going to show you guys a snippet of the video that Nick Jr. put out today. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. Yay, Sharky! I got here by doing things my own Sharky B way. Ooh. Every fish she can do the silly swag. Do the silly swag, 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 swag. Swim to the left, swim to the right. Now spin and do the Phoenix swag. You gotta come on tour sometime, okay? All right, so you guys just saw that snippet um, from the Nick Jr. Um, video. And so it's causing a little bit of controversy because some people feel like there's no reason that Cardi B and Offset should be on Nick Jr. Offset raps about, you know, drugs. Cardi B, you know, she raps about WAP and stuff like that. So why is she doing a kid's show? Like, people are here for culture, you know what I'm saying, being a part of the show. But people on Twitter are definitely feeling the way, which I find very interesting because I don't recall people getting up in arms when Miss Like a Virgin and, you know what I'm saying, Touch for the very first time, Miss Madonna wrote a children's book. I don't recall outrage. I recall people buying the book. Yeah, there's definitely um, a lot of hypocrisy there because there's a lot of pop stars that have been on Sesame Street. I want to say, hasn't Lady Gaga been featured on Nickelodeon at some point in time? Like, there's been Lady Gaga, Katy Perry. I mean, there's been so many people who's wrote stuff. I mean, I I know you can't really compare, like, a Taylor Swift and a Cardi B, but all of them have at some point in time... Uh, had, like, more adult content, you know, Mm -hmm. like, aimed more toward adults than kids. Right. Lady Gaga um, appeared in episode 4,727, hoodie. Yeah. Because we know they've been on since the 70s. So she appeared on Sesame Street in 2018. Um, Katy Perry was on Sesame Street. So a lot of people who have been controversial have also done kid shows. So I don't really see, you know, much of the difference. Like, I get it. I get some parents feeling like, well, you know, she raps about this. She shouldn't be on a kid's show. But again, she's not the first to do it because you've had other big name celebrities who are, you know, saying about controversial stuff. Katy Perry was hollering how she kissed a girl and, you know, fake being a lesbian when she wasn't even a lesbian. And yeah, she was you know, gay for pay. All right. You know what I'm saying? Gay for pay. And we saw her, you know, talking and having a good old funky time with Elmo. Yeah. And, you know, I I, I didn't ever have a problem when Lady Gaga or Katy Perry did it. But I, I, then again, that's why I wouldn't really care about Cardi. And I also find it very interesting. Like, what's wrong with them showing a, a positive, not, not necessarily a positive, but uh, she has a kid. She has a family. Like, she's an entertainer. What's wrong with her? showing that part of her life in a show yeah and i think that's cool to show other facets too because again she's more than just a rapper and an entertainer but she's also a mom so i think this will probably bring a different you know look for her brand so i'm I'm definitely here for it now on top of that 
Um, we also found out today that Invasion of Privacy, which was her first album, is also the first album in history where every single track has been certified platinum. Every okay. song on Invasion of Privacy. You know, I as far as that album goes, I listened to every single, like every song on that album was a bop. So that don't surprise me. But another thing too, thinking about back to the baby shark thing, I don't even know if it's just like, a, I'm sure, you know, Cardi gets a lot of hate. I think it is the fact that she's a rapper too. Like, mm -hmm. I wonder, I think it's the genre of music. I didn't even think about that till just now. Like, I, I know I ain't, you know, no shade to Iggy Azalea, but like if Iggy Azalea was to go on there with, uh, I don't know, pretend she was married and, mm -hmm. and her kid, I wonder if she would get the same backlash or if any other rap, I think that it is the fact that it's Cardi and it's a rapper. Right. You know, and at this point she just has to ignore, you know, whoever's talking and the tweets and stuff like that and just focus on the positives. You know what I'm saying? Put the show out there. I'm sure it's going to be a hit because everything she touches literally turns to gold, you know, including this new platinum certification that she just got. So she's definitely doing her thing. So that's why she was trending today. On top of that, at midnight, she's going to be dropping a new track with SZA and Summer Walker. So I can't know, wait. Yeah, I, can't, I love cool. that song. Mm -hmm. I love I love everybody on that track, so I can't wait. That was one of my favorite songs on the album, so I, I can't wait for it. Yeah, a lot of people are waiting for that. And then on top of that, um, Big Lotto, she's also dropping her 777 album. You know, I'm really, I'm really feeling Lotto. I've been watching a lot of her interviews, and I think she has really grown as an artist. Just the way that she's handling the interviews, the way she's talking, the stuff that she's talked about. Like, I, I'm, I'm feeling Lotto. Yeah, I definitely do like her as well. Now, did you know that there's a ghostwriter who came out today and basically said that he's the one who wrote the song that Lotto did with Saucy Santana? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what song uh, you're talking about, too. What it, You think he's telling the truth? No, if you see this damn raggedy video, first of <laughs> all, when you see the video with him in the studio with Big Lotto and Saucy, Lotto's literally sitting there with a pen in hand, and you can see her writing. Dude is literally doing a selfie video. Like, he's never been around any celebrities. Like, he's never been in the studio. See, he was so worried about recording footage to prove that he knows the two of them that he wasn't looking at his contract. Because if you're going to be a ghostwriter, then that's what you are, a ghostwriter. Why did you not make sure that your credit with your ghostwriter name was listed somewhere on the, you know, on the album? But Lotto came out and she addressed the situation. And um, this is what she had to say. <laughs> Anyways, Lotto had responded to him and basically she called him out and said, does he even look like a writer to you? Because the way he was behaving in the studio, he looked like a groupie. So she, <laughs> basically, yeah, she basically blasted him, you know, so I'm not buying it. I don't believe that he wrote for her. You know, we know that there's ghostwriters in the industry. We know that there's songwriters and people behind the scenes. But the way he was acting, he just looked like a groupie or, or a fan. Yeah, he wasn't acting like an established, you know, writer yeah. who's been in the industry for a while. It, he was acting like someone who had just been around someone famous or something. Exactly. And that's what people were blasting him about. So it's like, sir, we don't believe you, you need more people. So she right. basically cleared him and was like, yeah. my album is dropping at midnight. Yeah, a little controversy, I guess, uh, you know, that's usually a thing around album too. Not saying that she had anything to do with that, but you had made that point in a video before. Um, I think it was one of your deep dives too, but how a lot of times with writing, people will be in the, the studio and they might just, you know, hum something and be like, oh, you should do this. And then they think they need some type of credit. Right, exactly. And that's the vibe I get from him is he feels like because he was there when they were making the song, because he's clearly there. He's in the video with the two of them. But did you really write a song or were you just humming the line or, you know, bobbing your head? And because you were there, you feel like you should get some type of credit. And then come to find out the song came out two years ago. So why are you just not saying something the day that her album is supposed to be released? Exactly. And uh, that one particular song, too, I mean, it, it was I thought it was a cute little song. But I mean, like you said, that song's been out for quite a while of all times to pick like he's clout chasing. Right. That's how I feel at this point.
So now I want to go ahead and segue. We want to talk about the whole Jocelyn situation with Jocelyn's Cabaret Las Vegas. Now, when we had the last podcast together, um, that's when the girl Amber Ali had gotten, you know, beat up by Jocelyn and ballistic. And remember, I was reading Jocelyn's struggle tweets, her yes. struggle tweets. And yes, the finish him. Right. She was so proud. And I kicked her and I drop kicked her. And, you know, she was team Mortal Kombat, honey. She was team, <laughs> team fighter. But now all of a sudden she's changing her tune because it looks like Miss Amber Ali has connected with some lawyers. Now, remember, Jocelyn was saying that, oh, I can't be sued. They signed waivers and NDAs. We're not so fast. Just yeah, she's because, an idiot. Yeah, just because somebody signs a waiver does not mean that you have the right to assault them. That's still criminal. Yeah. So um, Amber took to her social media page, and this is what she wrote. She says, I'm so embarrassed, mortified, and depressed. I can't stop replaying the events in my head over and over. Ballistic should be arrested. He and Jocelyn attacked me in front of cameras, crew, production, and guests. This is wrong. I want justice. Please reach out to my attorneys with any questions. And then she added her attorneys. And this is the statement that her attorneys put out. Um, they wrote this on March 17th. So they said, we are very saddened by the events that occurred during the taping of Jocelyn's cabaret reunion show yesterday. The acts that occurred are horrific unacceptable and far removed from any notion of female empowerment. It is neither permissible or entertaining to be the subject of an intention of intentional acts of violence, irrespective of the gender or the perpetrator committing these acts. The network should ensure the safety and the security of its cast members, which warrants the degree of care necessary to prevent serious bodily injury or harm. The extent of our clients injury and distress are to be taken very seriously, and we intend to vigorously address and advocate on her behalf. And then they wrote their lawyer's office info. So this is definitely picking up steam. And right now on social media, people are calling for Jocelyn's Cabaret to be um, canceled and calling for Zeus Network to also be sued. Yeah, so they should. Mm -hmm. So then Jocelyn released a statement the next day. And so this entire statement is just, it's comical, honey. So <laughs> this is I what it's spelled right. right? So Jocelyn says, we are deeply saddened by the accusations made against our family at Jocelyn's Cabaret Reunion. <laughs> 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 the energy is different, honey. Tell me yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> This is the same one that was talking about ho ho bitch bitch. I kicked you into last one. <laughs> right. I mean, within twenty four hours, the energy just shifted completely. Okay. She goes on to say, "We would like to thank our fans for their continued support." Jocelyn is a mother of a five year old girl and would never take any actions to jeopardize her family. They noted that one of the missions for this show is female empowerment, and that includes supporting women and not breaking them down. <laughs> <laughs> While we support Zeus Network and its message in condemning bullying, unprovoked violence, and men attacking women, we strongly disagree with the correlation between these things and the events that took place that night. There is footage of the events, and we are confident that our position is made obvious. We are denying any claims made against us. In this time when social media narratives easily get misconstrued, we believe our family's response is being silenced by the facilitated deletion of both Jocelyn's Instagram and Facebook accounts. Oh, good God. <laughs> so I guess the only thing she has left is Twitter. So now she wrote that on the 18th or, you know, somebody, honey, from her. She has about to say she didn't write shit. She you know, when she's saying a narrative's being spun or whatever, you're the one who put it that that out like it's not like someone's saying something about you and everybody's you know spinning this narrative you're the one who said i whooped that bitch's ass i kicked her into last week's episode or whatever she said right that's what doesn't make any sense like had the girl came out crying and said that she got beat up by jocelyn and ballistic okay well we would just be getting her side but that doesn't necessarily mean that it happened but jocelyn right. really came on twitter 
and was, you know, Billy Badass the same day. Yeah, I kicked you. Yeah, I did this and that. But then once the girl lawyers up, now it's, oh, me and my family, you know, we want to put out a statement. We would never do anything to hurt anyone. It's all about female empowerment. You know, with the soft, sweet voice and shit. Like, it's the hell oh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.